Still good? Yeah? Okay, step six. And this is where you're promoting acceptance of the partner's experience, right? And creating new interaction responses. Now that you pass this, uh, I don't know, this primary emotion over, or this new information over, right? You want to just help them, help the receiving partner to hear it, to, to accept it somehow, right? Uh, for example, if the person is passing over this fear about not being good enough, or this attachment needs around that I want to be accepted, right? Uh, that we want to help the receiving partner to really hear that deep hurt. It's not a drive by, okay, I'm sorry. We're not looking for an apology, guys. Mm -hmm. When we talk about acceptance, we're not talking about, oh, I'm sorry for hurting you. It, it's more than that, right? I, sometimes we not, may never even hear the word sorry and we still do a pretty good step six, right? Sometimes if it happens organically, that's fine, of course, right? But step six is really about, does that person actually really get it? I don't mean here, but here, right? Not just in the head, but in the heart. Do I really get what that's like for my wife to say, I'm feeling lonely? Or for one of the partners to say, I, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm never enough for you. And that hurts me. And could the receiving partner actually can, can feel that? and able to somehow respond with some empathy. Things like, I feel sad hearing that. I feel sad that you're hurting. I, I don't want you to feel sad. I don't want you to be hurt. Right, it would be statements like that, right? Uh, it doesn't even have to have a sorry. In fact, sometimes when there's a lot of injury that happens in the relationship, like an affair, the partner would have, the, the, in, the one who did the injury, would have said sorry so many times already. Most well, sorry actually doesn't help really. I mean, I don't, that's not what I'm looking for. We're looking at whether they actually get it. And the way they get it is really can they offer this empathy? Again, you can tell whether people are offering true empathy or like, oh, I'm sorry. Or like, oh yeah, I feel sad. You, you, can, you can sort of tell, right? Because when people are actually sad about for somebody, the whole being is in there, right? They actually, uh, their body, their words are actually can show that they actually are sad that their partner is hurting, right? So we're looking at that. Now a lot of times though, of course, right, the listening partner may block the shared message. So let's say, uh, again, if, uh, if you pass over this feeling about not being good enough to your partner, and, and you, might have a tr you might have trouble hearing that, right? Because that, what would be some of the things that might block you from hearing? If she try to pass over, say, this fear about not being good enough, that I tell you I can never get it right, mm -hmm. what might block her from really hearing this? Yeah. Ready? Mistrust. Sorry? Mistrust. Mistrust, yeah. Past hurts. Past hurts, sure, because this person's hurting too. Mm -hmm. See, if I'm hurting, I would have a hard time hearing what's being passed over to me, mm -hmm. even though she's being vulnerable right now, mm -hmm. right? I'm gonna have a hard time with that. So past hurts, what else? What else could be blocking, yeah? A denial? Yeah, sure. Right, maybe this is so new. Like, like the husband that was telling him. Because he goes, well, no, it's not true. Because logically, he's going there, right? It's not true, I, I do need you. So you're feeling whatever, that's not true. It's not real. So that could be a denial, a block right there, right? What else, Heidi? Fear. Yeah, fear is a big one, right? Fear of, uh, I did this to you? No, I, I couldn't help. I love you. I couldn't possibly hurt you like that. Uh, one other partner would keep saying to their partner, say, I'm so shocked to hear this hurt, because I would never ever do that. I'm not that kind of person, right? It breaks my, I mean, she would say things like, she was very dramatic too. She, you, it breaks my heart to even hear you say this. But she said it so many times. The husband know exactly what that means, right? That means I'm not hearing you. Right? So those are the things that sort of blocks people from really hearing the message, right? So this is where most of the time I find is where the EFT therapists get, get paid good money is at this point. We want to help them to, to hear that message, right? We want to slow it down. We might even look at different parts, right? So part of you have a hard time really hearing this. Well, of course, maybe this is so new for you. This is not what you see at home. Perhaps you never hear this before from your partner, right? At home, your partner just goes away, 
right? She never come and say to you that I, I, I'm, I'm not good enough. This fear that I'm not good enough. So is that, is that what's happening to you? Right, so we talk about that, right? Uh, so we, 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 want to, we want to help the client to receive the message. Uh, we want to help clients to stay focused on this primary emotions until they become more tangible and clear enough to invoke a sense of need. A lot of times what happens is when they cannot receive the message, what would they do? If, if fear blocks them, if denial blocks them, if mistrust blocks them, then what would they typically do? Hmm? They shut down, they go numb. Uh, well, I guess depending whether they're pursuing or, or, or withdrawing, right? I lo or, or at the very least, they would go into what? They go into content, yeah. right? They start to bring up evidence to say, no, what do you mean that you're not good enough? Like, da -da 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 -da, right? Uh, they give you 10, yeah, the dance, exactly. So what you need to do, again, to refocus back on the emotion. So oftentimes you interrupt the, about the content that they're talking about, say, can we just go back to that place again? Right, when you, and I go back, it's a cycle, right? We we'll go back to reflecting back. Your wife just said to you that there are many times in our relationship, I feel so lonely, I feel so lonely. I'm not able to get to you. And she talks about this void in her heart, in this sinking feeling. Like this would be something that she already has said already. I'm just basically reflecting it. Again, to refocus back on, on how that impacts you, mm -hmm. even though you, you your first block was to deny or to, to go away. Now I'm, I'm just coming right back. We're focusing. You know that, like the binoculars, you just focusing, right? We find to go right back to that feeling about that loneliness. Again, I'm asking, well, what's it like for you to hear that, that loneliness? When your wife talks about this void, I get it. There's a part of you that is, is so difficult to see that, to, to trust that. Is there any other part of you? as you hear your wife talks about this, right? So again, then I'm, I'm looking for the time that you could actually ma maybe respond. Does, does that make sense? A lot of our work, I find, in EFT, is about the ability to refocus. What happened to us when, uh, for most therapists, I think in the beginning, is we get lost in the content. And, and, and a lot of things are happening, because once you start to give four pieces of evidence of content about why sh no that's not true what would the, the other partner do defend, defend themselves mm -hmm. now she might get five pieces of evidence why her feeling is correct right and then she would and then the partner would defend again right and they, they just become lawyers right and they no longer are connecting so our ability to interrupt after a while in stage two we we don't track as much, definitely we, we don't spend too much time in the content. We, we, we interrupt a lot more when they do that. Stage one, probably in the first few sessions, we'll listen a little bit more to content just to understand the cycle a bit more, sure. But remember I was, I was telling you, by, by really by session seven, eight, nine, and, and after, we do very little. We're just listening to the content. We'll listen to any content they talk about through the lens, through the lens of the dance. And then we'll go right back to the process. Again, we're a process consultant. We don't problem solve, we don't content solve, okay? Does that make sense to you, right? So a lot of times people would want to distract you by going into content, uh, by defending, wh whatever ways that they so go off track, you help them to refocus back. Why do we do that? Because we believe that's where the change happens. Emotion is the agent of change in EFT, right? We'll talk about this. If you focus, if you stay faithful in that emotion, uh, like say if she passed over her primary emotions, now she will have the response in some ways. Even the blocks are a type of response. The block is really, uh, um, maybe it's about, I have a hard time hearing that, or I'm afraid to respond to that, or, or because it means, sometimes for them means if I actually show you empathy, means I'm wrong, mm -hmm. right? So we process that, right? Um, so staying, like staying focused is gonna be important. So what are some of the ways that we can help listening partners to accept the message, okay? So there are a number of them. I'm just gonna go through them a little quicker. Some of them already showed you already. Uh, validation is important. We've talked about this before, right? A lot of times in our work with couples, with family, really even, while well, we're working with one, we're supporting the other. So I'm trying to still try to figure out what's happening to you and, and maybe start to set up an enactment. Sometimes in the middle of it, you're already interrupting. 
because this is not your experience, right? So you are interjecting with your own version. So we want to be able to like say, validate to say, this must be difficult for you to hear this, right? Because that's not your experience at home, right? But can I just hold you there for a sec? Yeah, can I just? So we'll go right back into focusing because, uh, because we want to help to, to pass things over. We want you to be able to somehow hear it and validate it, right? Uh, yeah. So for example, it's so hard to see her as fearful when all this time you have seen her as removed, right? Because when she starts to show more of a softer feeling, that's not your version at home, right? At home, we don't see that. So of course, you're going to have a hard time experiencing that. So we want to validate that. So this is not what you see at home, right? So this, what you just saw right now, is so foreign to you, right? But still, if, if that was true, what would that be like for you? So we'll go right back into focusing on, on that emotion. Does it make sense to you? This is probably one of the most simplest things you can do, but also very effective on what you can do. Uh, the other one is just, again, reflecting back and maintaining the focus. Uh, so they interrupt, they, they go off track, and you got off track because they, they throw so much content at each other. Remember what I said to you the other day? When you lose track too, when you start to forget, what do you do? Reflect. Can't go wrong with that. You reflect back about what you just saw, the dance, perhaps even showing you right now. Right, even in this office, right? Even though you try to set an actment, and then when you sort of interject it and you fight back, and that's probably the dance happening. So we might even use that as a way to reflect the, da the dance back to them, right? Reflect things back to them to say, yeah, it's the guys, you know what? I think that's the dance, right? Can, but can I get you guys to refocus? You said something so important earlier. You talked about this loneliness. Can we go, and then I might reflect again about the body sensation, about what that's like for you. And I might turn back to you and says, when you can really focus on that, right, Sarah? C can you really hear what your partner is saying about this loneliness? So I'm just refocusing back, softening the voice, you know, the wrist thing, re repetition, right? Uh, if there was an image, we use an image about this void in the body. Uh, so soft, simple, uh, slow. Um, Client's words, you know, the risk acronym, remember? It's all that, right? And then we would focus back on, on what was the, the important dish, right? Remember, we're passing over the hot dish, the real meat, the juicy steak, right? Even though say, they're throwing the potatoes and the vegetables, I don't know about you, I'm going for the steak, right? Vegetable, you know, right? But the steak, that's what we're going for. We're gonna pass that over. Number three, we might want to heighten and unfold the listening partner's experience of the new responses, right? Uh, so for example, sometimes you might um, heighten certain emotions while they're being, uh, certain, when they are passing things over, when people are blocking. So the person might say things like, well, I feel nothing, I feel cold. You might actually talk about, like, tell me about what that cold is like, right? What is that cold is like for you in the body? Again, going for the body sensation, but this time I'm processing what's happening um, so the ability to perhaps even heightening uh, some, some of what's happening. Uh, I remember one time, I think I, I don't know where to share this before, uh, working on a couple again, husband passed something over that was you know, pretty deep, was very with some vulnerability. And when I asked the wife, well, how, well, how was that like for you? And the wife had this flat face, emotion, was like, fine. Like, you know, that, and that was the glaze, right? So we processed that. So tell me about that. I don't know, like, I, I, I'm feeling something here, but I, I see your face being very still. It's almost like this, almost like you're not able to show any emotion in your face. No, this is not judgment, right? This is just reflecting about what I'm seeing. And then you says it's fine. And you sort of, you sort of said that with a very flat tone. Help me, help me with that. What's happening here? Right? Of course, you resisted a bit, but eventually we're able to talk about, well, I don't trust that. I don't trust what my husband is saying right now. Actually, I, I don't actually believe he loves me. Right? So therefore, again, that it, it, it helps you to understand why she blocks it. Why the flat? Right? 
because if I actually sh if she actually show any kind of excitement about what she's hearing because I think something in it she's excited about it because there's some new changes could be happening but what if she was wrong what if he deceives her right what if he what he said isn't true then all this hope and excitement and all that stuff that she, she actually have inside of her will be a sham will be her hurting again right so we were able to at least talk about that right and and then and then what do you, what do you think I do afterwards she was talking about that I'm so afraid that my husband actually doesn't love me right that's why I don't want to show anything right now because that would be too vulnerable let's say if I can get you to talk about this as a listening partner what do, what do you think I would do at that point Huh? Sure, I can, okay, so I can go that route. I can show, I can use what Sue does. I could never, you could never say that to her, right? And then, and then at some point, I'm still gonna say, but could you say that to her? Mm -hmm. Could you say to your husband right now that even though what you said to me has some impact on me, part of me want to feel excited, but the other one says, the fear says don't, because I don't know whether I can trust you. How do you think that would be like for him, to, to this partner to hear even that? What do you think? I think that that would soften him a little bit because it, it's showing him that she's so afraid right. to say something. Yeah. That she she's so afraid that she can't even turn to him. That's say, right. right. That's right. Yeah. Because even though she said I cannot tell her that, but really he is. She is telling. Yeah. Right. And in fact, she's telling something about her fear. Yeah. In the example that I gave you, she's actually the pursuer. She's always the critical one. Uh, so she, 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 and you're right, so when she was talking about her fear now, it's actually softer. And the husband can actually hear that a bit more. I mean, it wasn't perfect, right? It wasn't like she, she was uh, readily, readily to receive everything that he was saying. In fact, at first it was like, I can't, I, I, it's flat, right? There's no emotion. And you can tell, I mean, when she was first says uh, it was fine, if you look over to the husband, you can see this hurt. It's like I'm being open now, I'm being vulnerable, but I just feel like I'm being stabbed, right? So those are those are some things, things that how we can manage that, right? So we want to heighten that that in that case the, the cold or the flat emotion or the fine, right? And, and able to talk about what that's like, and then able to enact that back, right? Um, oh, yeah. I was just gonna say, you know, in that in that place where the husband's saying, I feel nothing. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Anything I can use to normalize what's happening, yeah. right? So that we take what we're doing is that we normalize. It's a way to validate why people do what they do. Yeah. It's not because they don't care about their partner, but because that's what they they was always taught. They learn to keep themselves, protect themselves. They feel safe. So it, it in a way it, it, it takes away that. So it's not so much about they don't love their partner. It's almost like they're afraid to be vulnerable right now. Right, so it's a th really different take on it, and then the partner on the other end would hear it differently, right? So you use your uh, whatever history you know about them, uh, or perhaps even the dance itself, to normalize what, what's happening, and then you check in. So does that sound right? Is that what's happening? Right now, it's so difficult for you to feel anything right now. You have to go cold. You have to go numb, because growing up, that's that's what you do to survive. Is this what I'm hearing? Like so. Checking in, checking in, and they may say yes, or say maybe, whatever, right? And then we're, we're working with that. Right? Um, right, so this is actually tie into some of the things we talked about, right? Tie in the non response to the cycle. So when the person says, uh, fine, I'm okay, no big deal, right? So if that is part of the dance that they do, we might tie that back into it. You say, well, of course. Right? So right now, even though your husband is opening up right now, but that's always a part of you, and you talked about this before, as part of the dance, that you need to protect yourself. Right? You're not gonna go there emotionally, because, because before, when you did, you got hurt. So now you learn to protect yourself by not going there. 
right? That, that is the dance, isn't it? Um, and sometimes you might even want to gently challenge the whole model of others for themselves sometimes. Uh, so sometimes when you recognize that person have a hard time uh, seeing that they can trust others. So going back to the husband that I was talking about earlier, the one that was so logical, you might even, when, when he, his first response says, no, my wife's feeling is not true, right? But we might even use, use, use that as a way to, uh, to, to normalize, to say, wow, but that's what you grew up with, isn't it? You learn to be t depend so much on yourself, right? You don't, you don't you, the logic becomes such a good way for you to stay in control of who you are, right? So of course, at this moment, when your wife says, I'm feeling not needed, right? Your logic takes over to tell you, to protect yourself, right? To say that, oh, it's not true. Because if it's if it really is not true, then you didn't do anything wrong, isn't it? Right, then you didn't hurt your partner. Then your partner is just maybe somehow, is, is maybe perhaps her feeling is not correct. And if her feeling is not correct, then this isn't your fault. You didn't do anything. Right? Am I am I getting that right? So we, we we're using that. Um, but at the same time, we we'll talk about but you but that's what helps you to survive before, right? To be more independent. But today, right in this relationship, right? I wonder whether we can look differently. Whether I wonder what would that be like if you could need her. You can show her that you do need her. I wonder what, what would that be like for you guys. So we're gently challenging the model of others, the model of self. Right? You might, you, we might even nudge it a bit. Does that make sense to you? About gently challenging them? Even though their typical model of self is I don't need people. But we might actually challenge that a bit. So I wonder. I wonder in this relationship, I wonder what would that be like for you? Because you did say to me, and he did say to me that, no, I do need her, right? I wonder what would, it, what would that be like if your, your wife actually really, really get it, that you do need her, right? Even though you can probably survive very well on your own, and you will agree, right? But I wonder what would that be like for you guys if your wife actually felt like, oh, you need me, right? So. Again, we're helping to gently challenge the old model of self or the model of others. Uh, number six, uh, we might help the listening partner to own their sense of self, right? Help them to, to again, seems similar to the last one, but this is more about the sense of self. Help them to, to own it about why they have difficulties in, in trusting. So for example, the therapist, the therapist might say things like, well, let me see if I understand. You're having a hard time seeing her this way. You're confused, perhaps because that's not what you usually see. At home, that's not what you see. Here, she's talking about her hurt, her sadness. At home, you only see her anger, right? So you're confused about that. It's hard for you to believe that right now she's afraid. Because at home, she only shows you how upset she is. You don't always get to see that fear of her. Of her. You might not even show how to respond to her. Is this what's happening? Is this how you're experiencing right now? A lot of times that's what happens to both people, right? If this is not the version of you I see at home, and you're showing me this right now, I'm gonna have a hard time trusting that, right? I don't know what to make of it. I'm a bit confused. Are you, show, are you just pretending right now? Are you doing this for the therapist? Or are you just uh, confused, right? So again, we're, we're normalizing. Because we actually do see that in, in, uh, in attachment. When something new is happening, people times are oftentimes a bit confused. They can make sense of it because they're so used to seeing the dance. The dance for them becomes so predictable, right? Uh, so that's something that we might, we might use it to validate. Uh, and another one is, is enactment. Another way to pass, uh, when, 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 when people have a hard time accepting, we might ask them to do the enactment. Like earlier, the example I, I gave you earlier, right? Uh, right now, I, 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 I just don't want to trust you right now. Uh, because that's not the experience I see at home. Uh, if I could believe it, that would be great, but right now I, I just can't. Well, could you say that to your partner right now? Could you even tell him that? That you're so, it's so difficult for you, right, to see her responses to you. You would rather not believe it right now. 
because it's too scary to believe. Could you say that if that's what they were saying? Okay. Again, why would that be important? Well, then, then at least now we're talking more about the fear instead of like, oh, I don't want to accept you. Do you hear the difference? Guys, do you hear the difference between when we can pass the emotion over? What's the difference between, it's fine, and I'm afraid to trust you. I'm afraid to believe what you're saying to me right now. What would be the difference between the two? You just passed something over to me that was very emotional, very vulnerable. So two responses. One is, fine. Right. One is like, I'm just shutting, shut up. If I, if I say to you somehow, I, I'm afraid to trust. I don't know what I could do that. It would be too scary for me. What, 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 what would the second response be like? Well, it's too scary for when it's not a connection. Right. When there's no connection at all, and the second one is like emotional. Perfect. One will be no, no connection. There's nothing to, there's nothing. I'm basically saying nothing. I'm shutting down, right? The other one is at least now I'm passing over my, my own feelings to you. I'm afraid. Now that's an opportunity to connect, right? I'm not saying for sure we're, we're connecting, but certainly that's a high probability that we can connect in some ways. Because now if I pass over my fear to you, depending where you are too, right? You, you might say, I'm so, uh, no, I don't, don't like hearing that because I feel sad that you're afraid. But also maybe I'm, well, I still feel bad that you can't take on my, no, take on what I'm saying to you. But at least that's created opportunity, right, to connect. The first one, zilt. Yeah, did you have anything else to add? I just was thinking about that this week, like, why is that vulnerability so important? <clears throat> I mean, we all know why it's important, but I mean, like, what got through that for me as I listened to that? And I think it's just because you're finally getting to what's really true. Mm -hmm. like all these fake sort of things, and right. finally you're getting to what's really the truth. Yes, I think you got it. I, I personally think that EFT is about being true. And that's why it's so scripturally, it fits so Yes, well. I, I think so too. Yeah. We're helping people to be true, to be authentic. Mm -hmm. Remember I said to you, I think being authentic is oftentimes you, you're encompassing both the good and the bad. The part that I could accept, I like a little bit about what you're saying, but the other part says, oh, right now I'm still afraid to trust. Almost always that two coexist. I'm just basically, as a therapist, I'm basically helping you to, to distill those two parts out and for you to pass it over. We, we're not trying to manufacture, we're not trying to manipulate. I just want to help you to, to be true to yourself and then able to be true to your partner. And then the way I look at it is then you let the chip fall wherever you may. But of course, I can pay more. Then I'm gonna help you to, 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 to manage that piece, right? To help you to accept the pieces that was difficult but definitely put more like spotlights on the piece that was actually connecting, right? I mean, that's what, that's what we do. But you're right, ultimately I see, if you shave away all the different techniques and the steps and whatnot, I find it uh, EFT, like most experiential therapy, is about helping to talk about what's real in the inside, usually emotionally based, and then able to pass it over to you. That's it, right? So in simply put, that, that could be a simple way of looking at it. Yeah. So enactment is, you think about it though, but enactment, that's why enactment is so key. Right? If you don't do enactment, you can't pass things, those things over. Because if they, if the part only hears it through me, then they go like, well, just information, nice, but it doesn't, it won't impact me as much as if my partner is looking me in the eye. Right? Whatever emotion that it might encompass with that statement, with that message, it's going to have impact on it. If I love this person, right? Right. So those are the uh, the steps, and uh, uh, how to. What are some of the ways that we can help partners to accept, right? Which is step six, right? Step six is about accepting the message. Does it make sense about the accepting, right? Which I think a lot of the times that's the one of the hardest part to do in EFT. I think most EFT therapists have a hard time with step six, in my opinion, because. When things go off the rail, when people start to go, you just imagine this, right? You did such a good job setting up the enactment. You distill the person, right? Because we work in the individual, we can deepen the person. Most of the therapists are pretty good with that. They can deepen, and then they and then they can do a good job enact, like do a setting up the enactment and pass something over. 
Because that all is within the therapist's control. I can, I can do that work, right? But the problem is, once I get this partner to pass something over to this person, now I have to ask this person over here to say, what's it like for you? At that point, I lost all control as a therapist. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. I have no control over what you're gonna say, do. It's just, it, that's when usually things get derailed. Because that person over here, they're not thinking about, well, how do I best you know, do this so that the therapy will work, so the Herman will feel better as a therapist? <laughs> like, they're not thinking that. They're thinking, they, they're responding to what's real for her or him. Right? Remember, there are many years of hurt, perhaps even hurts that didn't, doesn't even belong to this partner, to their own attachment history. All that stuff will be encompassing her at that moment when you're passing the message over. So lots of things can go wrong, and also lots of things can go right. But you, you, you will not know it until you do pass it over. Okay? So, so let's be honest. It's scary to do that because at that point I'm losing control about what, what, how the session is going to go. But again, if you trust the process, also trust some of your, your own experiences, then even if things go off rail, uh, because we have a, a roadmap, we, we can sort of tell where you would go off track. We probably anticipate something will go off track already. Mm -hmm. But we can help. We can normalize. It's difficult for you to hear this. This is not your experience. You don't see this at home. But what if you could, right? Is that another, another part of you? Like this, things that we can do to manage that piece. To me, that's still okay because again, I, my job is just to be real, to be honest, right? So if the partner respond partly is like, I don't believe you, and oh, I feel good hearing that, then I'm still gonna pass that over back. Right, does that make sense to you? Um, so to me, that's your step six, right? Step seven is about facilitating uh, the partner's expression of needs and creating new interactional responses. So this is where we start to ask them about, assuming that now they have some connection, the partner can actually like accept the partner's uh, words, their, their, especially their primary, primary emotion, like loneliness, for example. They really respond to that. They feel sad about that. They go like, I don't want you to be, be like that. I don't want you to be lonely. Then at that point, we can ask the speaking uh, partner to say, so what would you need from them? What would you need from your partner right now? What would you need? help you even feel a little 